in my DMX voice. Here we go again. <laughs> Welcome back to another Truth Behind video. Don't forget, this is linked to a playlist, which means there are more of these. <laughs> Truth Behind Hip Hop Beefs playlist has over a thousand videos in it. Yes, it is over a thousand, ladies and gentlemen. So when someone says, man, I've seen all those before, I mean, no, the hell you didn't. <laughs> I haven't seen all of them. <laughs> and I made them. So over a thousand is in there. We're over 10,000 videos strong. Now, as we move forward, we get to the next chapter. The truth behind the Pebbles and Vanessa Williams beef. And what's strange about this beef, most of you, you guys know it. <laughs> That's what's strange. <clears throat> you guys all know it. I was very shocked when people was like, yo, tell us what happened. I'm like, wow. That's not bad. Now, in the 80s, music started to change as far as R&B. Rhythm and blues. The Anita Bakers and singers like that. You know, Aretha Franklin. All of these were inspirations to other people who really didn't come from this era and was doing all this different type of music. And we started to see more pop come on the scene, popular, you know, singing. More like Jody Watley started coming doing her thing than in Madonna. You know, you had Madonna come out and break the mold, which led to the everybody, the Tiffany's and the the Debbie Gibsons and the and Pebbles <laughs> where they're not very strong vocalists, but they did everything else that mattered to the younger audience. They had dance, they had flair, they looked the part. So it was more about them than anybody else. You know, it was more about the movement, the flair, the hands moving and going even left to right and all of these techniques and moves that are being done you know it's like are you serious this is nuts this is a new era but pebbles came from the bay and she's the type that had to basically scrape and scrine to get everything she had to get going and that was that. So she was in a funk band uh, coming up and was struggling to get her career going, trying to be a singer, how to be a waitress and cleaning people's houses. So she's out there in this funk band and then she got to go do some uh, doing some records and then she was with some dude and she somebody was going to give her a, a record deal but because she ended up getting pregnant they pulled the whole thing down away and she had her daughter and she got married and everything was you know going in the way that it was then it didn't work out <laughs> Because while she was married, <laughs> she got, uh, and she was working a job as a, at a real estate office, and she was meeting one of the contractors for the jobs for construction. And she began an affair with him. And the guy's wife was battling cancer.
and she was there for him, messing around with him as his wife is dying of cancer. She's battling cancer and dying, and she's messing around with this married man. Plus, she was still married and going through a divorce herself. Then the wife ended up passing away, and like right after the wife passed away, at 19 years of age, Pebbles decides to marry this 41-year-old man, Mr. Smith. And they lived in San Francisco out there in the Bay. After his wife passes away. Can I, I cannot make this up. <laughs> I cannot make this up. So this lets you know, this is the foundation of what Pebbles came from. She had a baby with this guy. He already had a kid with his former wife who passed away. And what this guy did was finance and give her $80,000 that she needed to work on putting together her demo tape and make a single for her song, which was Mercedes Boy. She had a demo and she got a music video that she filmed with the Mercedes that she owned, thanks to her husband. So MCA decided to give her a record contract. They said, this girl has got it. She's got that it factor. So Pebbles got her record deal. Now, let's look at the other side of the coin. Vanessa Williams. Vanessa Williams is the apple of everybody's eye. We didn't know she existed until she was the first black Miss America in 1984. She shocked the world, being the first black Miss America, and everybody was up in arms. I remember my mom being happy. Everybody was happy. Then all of a sudden, somebody found some steel shots. That she had took some pictures from, like, Hustler Magazine, it had came out or something. She had took some pictures in the magazine. And they found the still shots from it. And because she took these photos, that just disqualified her. And they put pressure on her to step down. The whole Miss Americas, they shamed her and made her feel bad. So she resigned. And Suzette Charles became Miss America. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Difficult times. She was really hurt after this. You know, she really was um, kind of drawn back, didn't really, you know, want to do too much. She was hurt. Her name has been drugged through the mud. But one thing about her, born from the Bronx, <laughs> she was tough. She was tough. And like Pebbles, would do anything to get herself where she needs to be. So, anyhow, after this brief uh, whatever, she wanted to go into music because that's what she did when she was doing Miss America. She said she sung. She was definitely a singer coming up. She did her Happy Days Are Here Again when she was in uh, Miss America's pageant and 
she wanted to show people that she could actually sing and wanted to go down that that road of actually singing so she had to sit back and kind of wait till everything died down for her music career before she can go ahead and start to get you know familiarized with everything and and even as an actress spike lee was casting her for uh his first movie which was school days they was filming school days at the time and she was the lead she had the lead part in the script without even auditioning she was going to be where tisha campbell was with dean big brother almighty she was going to play that role well she had the role but she turned it down So after she was on the Love Boat, she did some television, she did some Broadway things and to keep herself afloat. She was letting people know that she was out there. So after she turned down these roles uh, with School Days and School Days became a hit, it helped Tisha Campbell blow up. After these things were done and she was going to a music career, she was getting ready to work on her first album that she had with Wing. That was her record deal she had, a record company she was with at the time. And Wing was a, a very smaller company. You know, they were like kind of revived by their parenting with Polygram at the time. So they had like Tony, 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 Brian McKnight, and you know, uh, Vanessa Williams, you know, that was the biggest clients that they had. So, after they were uh, revived in 96, we decided to close down or whatever. And everybody moved over to Mercury, but that's beside the point. Wing Records. That's what she signed to. She was the only people that was really giving her a chance in this business. So, when this was done, um, a lot of different things were taking place as far as the industry. Everybody wanted that pop and moving, and she was like, okay, I could do that. So that's where everything was going towards. She wanted to do that. The Right Stuff was a pop album, and she wanted to showcase, you know, she could be, you know, moving and dancing, and they are like, trying to make her more like Whitney Houston, but with more flair. And they were like, well... They said, well, here it is. We have a problem. And they were like, well, what's the problem here? And they was like, well, the problem is, oh, wow. Everybody's trying to get my attention. So they're like this. The problem is, <clears throat> while working on Vanessa's the right stuff album. They're trying to find the right writers and the right look for it to pop. So Wing, uh, they reached out to L.A. Reed. They said, well, let's get Babyface, L.A. Reed in here. And they had a song for her called Girlfriend. Girlfriend! <laughs> they played it for her in their apartment. Played the song Girlfriend. She loved it, and she wanted the song, and she offered, uh, I don't know how many thousands, but they offered like 15,000 for the song. Pebbles! <laughs> Her Vanessa Williams, who's working on an album that's coming out, 
and Pebbles, who's already got her album. Her album is done. Basically, all her songs are recorded. It is done and done. So, the story, and this is the story everybody heard, and this was people like, yeah, I heard that Pebbles came and gave him two cars and some more money, and that's why he took the deal. Damn, L.A. Reid just lied to y'all. <laughs> L.A. Reid was banging Pebbles. Why her husband was financing all of this, L.A. Reid was tapping and tapping away. A bang, a bang, a bang, a bang, a bang, a bang. <laughs> While her husband at the time, the one who married her after his wife was dying of cancer, was sleeping around with her while his wife's dying of cancer. Then married her as soon as his wife passes away. Has a baby with her. And next thing you know, she's over here sleeping with L.A. Reid while married to him. So you already know <laughs> what's going on right now. So it became more rampant, you know, after the fact because he was a big producer and now this is the next step for her. So now she's ready to move on away from the construction guy. She don't need him no more. You understand how this cycle works? <laughs> you start to see the sinistry. You'll be able to follow these steps as we move along. People's background explains a lot of their behaviors. So. Her and Reed started getting more close. And that's why he gave her the damn song. It wasn't about that. He's like, this song going to be a hit. And Vanessa Williams, I was going to give it to her. But now, I'm going to give it to you. And this is what really caused a riff between L.A. Reed and Babyface. Babyface wrote that song. And because he wrote that song, it looked bad on him. And he didn't like it one bit. It put him in a bad spot. And when you put somebody in a bad predicament or a bad spot, it, you know, he didn't like that. They trying to work on something because he was at the time working on his album and things and they gave girlfriend and they were using all these writing credits to try to build something and you doing some shady business like this so when Vanessa Williams found out that the song was given away she found out because she heard it they didn't call her and tell her anything they just blew Vanessa Williams off when they were trying to find out okay when am I gonna get the record this and that they found out when her album comes out right away, boom, and the first single is the song Girlfriend. And they're like, what? What is this? <laughs> Girlfriend was the very first single. Mercedes Boy, which was way of that, which got her the deal, was supposed to be her single. That song never came out until the next year. Girlfriend was the song. And that put Pebbles on the map and everybody's Pebbles is great. Now it's Madonna and Pebbles. And then Mercedes Boy, which got her the deal, came out and did all these things. So the husband found out that, hey, something's going on here with you and this producer guy. And you ain't returning my calls. And next thing you know, she wants a divorce. He wants a divorce. So now they get a divorce. So now, it's okay. She can be with the producer guy all she wants. And the construction guy was given his executive producership of the album. He was, I EP'd this album, which he did. He produced the money for this album.
and the albums sold over a million records. So even though he got played and the scumbag actually got some money. Now, Vanessa Williams is pissed. She cuts off L.A. Reid and Babyface for writing for her. They're done. L.A. Reid, I don't think to this day, has ever had a conversation with Vanessa Williams <laughs> ever again. She refuses to speak to him because of this situation. Now, what had happened is they were up, Vanessa Williams' album comes out, and it does fairly well. The right stuff was her lead single, but she wanted hers to be girlfriend. So they took the Rex, the Rex uh, Salad song, The Right Stuff, which they named the album, and that was the lead song, and Dreamin' was a good hit. But she wanted an album that had a variety of two different things. It was to show her, her vocal talents, and that she was about the pop music and dance at the same time. Though it has some success, it went gold, I believe. And she got three Grammy nominations because of it, which was shocking. But she got three Grammy nominations. So at this time, Mercedes Boy is out. And, you know, Pebbles is the big thing, and Vanessa Williams is coming on the scene. So at the award ceremony, Pebbles is at the awards, Vanessa Williams is at the awards, and Pebbles is trying to, you know, explain the situation with Girlfriend and the songs, like, oh, well, her album wasn't coming out anyway, and they wanted to have the song out right away, and that's why they, she was looking like, <laughs> I ought to smack you in the face. It was not the reason why they gave you that song, and they know it. It wasn't the money, wasn't nothing. You're sleeping with the guy. So Vanessa Williams basically took the high road and stated, like, well, integrity is everything in this business and in business period. So when you don't, when you show you don't have an integrity down the road, we'll see what happens. She knew. She knew. She knew. So while Pebbles was out there trying to, you know, manipulate the public, she was just happy she was in her spot. So now Vanessa Williams was supposed to be, they were having like the the party, the after party in front of one of these shows or whatever, and Pebbles was going to be there. So Vanessa Williams pulled out. And they were like, why? The, her management team or the people, the producers is like, why are you not going? She's like, I don't want to be in that scene. Uh, it's going to be her, the L.A. Reid, the baby pay. I'm not trying to be involved in that, that situation. Um, the people that are kind of associated with them, we kind of like staying away from that group altogether. But she, they were like, you need to be seen. It's going to promote your album. She didn't care. She had integrity. And she was not going to compromise her integrity and be seen with a bunch of people she does not consort with. So she was not going to attend. And she apologized to them and said, no, no, trust me. In the end, this is going to work out. Basically, she was right. She was right. Now, at this time, Pebbles is, everybody's like, okay, we got to get back to work. We got to get this thing going. We got to get back on track. We got to get everything going to the places that we want to take it, and we got to keep moving. Let's keep going. So at this time, the entertainment industry was, was going in different directions. And Babyface and L.A. Reid, who both were writers, and Kim Babyface was more the singer-writer, where L.A. Reid was more the, the
the writer and instrumentalist, drummer, whatever you want to call him, businessman. And they formed LaFace Records. And they came out in 89 doing the LaFace Records company. Now, now they're in the business of writing for themselves and distributing their records. And during this time, L.A. Reed was becoming more and more and more. The more success he had, the more Eric Benet. <laughs> he make Eric Benet look like a doggone monk. <laughs> L.A. Reed would make him, everybody was like, man, you know, he got a sex edition. Everybody thought Eric Benet invented sex edition. It didn't exist until Eric Benet said it. Like, that's a thing? <laughs> How'd that happen? And that ruined his career. Nobody wanted to buy another song from him since. Like, man, he's addicted. He's an addict. <laughs> Well, shoot, L.A. Reed was worse. <laughs> and him and Pebbles kept explosively having fights. You heard about all these different situations. You can go down the list and name the amount of problems that have happened due to this time and fact. Now, at this time, Vanessa Williams has moved on. She puts out getting her other album ready to go which was called The Comfort Zone, which was more intimate, less dance, more into her vocals than anything else. By having Brian McKnight work with her, she has uh, more of a sound and trying to get her voice to the right places it need to be. She had the right producers, the comfort zone, running back to you, saving the best for last. You know, Keith Thomas was writing these songs, and he was just on fire at the time. Keith Thomas was one of the best writers, period. And these are the songs that people were like, wow, running back to you, and the comfort zone and saving the best for last. These are the songs that are timeless. And these songs are timeless. While those pop songs, they normally play out. Nobody really play them no more. And you started to see the implosion of what happened with Pebbles. You know, her second album didn't do well. And she blamed a lot of things on L.A. Reid and how they was handling her and things of that nature. And she was just, didn't have any range. Now, Vanessa Williams, she had pipes. She can sing. Pebbles can't. She can't sing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but she just can't sing. So Babyface and L.A. Reid basically wrote her entire second album. She did, uh, like what, like two, this is a whole L.A. Reid and Babyface, LaFace type of performance. They did almost every song on our album, and none of it really went anywhere. I think it went gold. That giving you the benefit was okay, but it was just not. It's not what. She can't sing. And when they tried to make her a serious artist and have Babyface write these songs for her and kind of make her kind of serious on the second one, it didn't work. It just didn't work. So, now, she comes back five years later after all the craziness, the insanity, 
that she was doing on the scenes. All of this stuff is going on. She's married to L.A. Reid. All this nightmares is going on. She sees Vanessa Williams. At this time, Vanessa Williams' career is going skyrocketing. Hers is going down. They see each other. And she smiles. Like, hi, Vanessa Williams. Vanessa Williams gives her a little slight. Hmm, whatever. Because <laughs> she knows the type of people that you want to be around and the type of people you don't want to be around. So Pebbles is trying to get close to Puffy at the time. You know, laughing, trying to get Puffy in it. So Puff ended up working on her album. I don't know what what happened there or what what she do, but you know her track record. So she started working with Puff. You know, trying to get Puffy involved in her album. This is like back when she had, you know, she's trying to get some rappers and everybody else on her album to give it some of that flavor. So it was Carl Thomas and Carl Thompson, rather. I keep calling him Carl Thomas. And uh, Puffy working on a couple of songs. You got Faith Evans wrote a uh, soul replacement on her album. So, you know, it was a lot of things happening. And once you do that, <laughs> a lot of different things happen for you. But the album didn't sell. And at this time, Pebbles is like, that's it. <laughs> I'm done. Like, it was no need for her to put out another album. She was making money, working at LaFace, being married to L.A. Reid. Just recruit the talent. That's all you need to do. So when she got TLC and everything else, you know, that's when she became the manager and you know, they trying to get the money coming in. Like, look, your time is coming and gone. It's time for other things to happen now. Your music career is just done. It's done and done. And getting an artist to admit that is the final blow. And then in 94, when she was working on her album back in 93, she let Babyface do two songs for her on her album after they spoke and said, hey, you know, <coughs> sorry about that. He said, look, this was not my idea. That whole thing that happened and went down, you know, that's L.A. and, and his thing, and I didn't agree with it. I'm about integrity, and she chose to work with Babyface and Babyface alone. So they, they her and Babyface became cool, and L.A. Reid could not get one iota of a thank you. <laughs> She's like, I won't, I don't want the face. I want you. You're the writer, baby face. I want you on the record. So they did Bet You Never. And they did uh, You Can't Run. So You Can't Run was the single they decided to release like later on down the road. But all her other writers who did Sweetest Day, all of those came out first. So that was basically the beef and how it went. You know, she would never, Vanessa Williams would never associate herself with L.A. Reid, period. So as her career went to films and everything else and soundtracks and movies and doing all these things, you start to see the way you treat people coming up and the way your actions were coming up you don't make any adjustments or changes in your life. You know, I, I might as well talk about it now. I wasn't going to talk about it, but why make another video about it? She, Pebbles, have had a lot of explosive situations. She came and trashed L.A. Reid's apartment, like broke all the dishes and stuff like that, just because Paula Abdul was at L.A. Reid's house. 
and she th he thought he was getting ready to get down with you know Paul Abdul, so she came in there and smashed up everything in the house. And this is when they were still married but separated at the time. So it was one of these situations, <laughs> you know. It's just and L.A. Reid likes stuff like that. Like he, yeah, tear it up, baby. <laughs> crazy you know and this this type of behavior i'm surprised me too ain't came out with the la reed case yet that probably be coming in two more weeks so next thing you know all of these situations and stories play into a situation where uh well a scenario where you see one side of the coin and then you see the other side of the coin. You say to yourself, wow. You know, like, so this is what's happening. This is what's going on. This is what's special. This is what's not special. Okay, uh, what's happening here? Um, is so-and-so doing what they're supposed to do? Vanessa Williams had erased everything that she had with Penthouse or Playboy or whatever that was. That one incident did not become a... One lapse of judgment did not become her defining moment in life. She still moved forward and still lived her best life. While at the same time, at the same time, we watch what happened with Pebbles. We watched how she came into the game and how she moved up the ladder and what she did to do that. Her character as a person never changed. She was the same way till the end. And you saw what happened with TLC. You make your own conclusion. Now, I'm out, <laughs> but I would love for you guys to continue to donate to the page. Don't forget to hit the cash app up and click the link in the description box. The description box is below, okay? It says Super Chat here. Click that button and donate to the page. We will appreciate all the love and support to the page, I promise you.